I like me a seal beam retrofit, but you really don't see that many of them, and it's no wonder why. Seal beam retrofits are among the biggest pain in the ass to retrofit out there. So today we're going to show how to do it. Uh, we're going to use one of the biggest projectors out there, a Nissan Murano. Retrofit it into this housing, put it on this Jeep, and we're going to use a Dremel tool to get it done. Now the first thing that you're going to notice is that we're actually not using the original equipment headlight housings to do this retrofit. And the reason why is because A, they have glass lenses, and B, the glass lenses are fluted, meaning that they have texture on them, and that's going to distort the output from a projector. Uh, so what we got here is a set of actually just pretty cheap aftermarket housings. These are made of plastic, uh, which are going to be a little bit easier for us to work with. Now a lot of aftermarket housings are made of glass, and that makes your life a little bit difficult when it comes to retrofitting because the glass, uh, it's, a, it's a little bit brittle. So when you go to pry the front lens off, um, you know, you're liable to break the housing. But as a tip, if you do insist on using a glass housing, you can actually dunk the housing into gasoline, literally a bucket of gasoline for a couple days, and that will eat the glue surrounding the perimeter of the headlight, and from there it'll just fall right off. And that's important because you really can't heat those housings since, uh, you know, again, prying on them is just going to break something. So again, we're using uh, the plastic housings here, pretty cheap, about 30 bucks on, on eBay or Amazon, anything like that. And uh, we'll go through, the, uh, go through the motions to get this uh, Murano projector retrofitted in there and eventually end up with uh, something like this partially finished uh, product. Since seal beam housings are regarded as being one of the smallest out there, uh, for purpose of demonstration, we're going to use a big bi-xenon projector, in this case a Nissan Murano. Uh, before you move on, you're going to want to try and trim all the fat away from the projector as much as possible. Um, in this case, you have all these original equipment mounting gears and a little bit of material around the solenoid. Now, depending on what projector you use, you might not have to do that. You know, this is only going to have to be trimmed up because it's an OEM projector and it has a lot of extra fat. But something like an FXR, you know, Morimoto Mini, et cetera, really not much extra trimming to do. So we're going to go ahead and trim all this stuff off and make it look more like this one that's already been trimmed. Now you've got your projector trimmed up, it's time to start modifying the housing. You can see this one's already been cut up um, basically to the correct shape, but this one is still in its natural form. So because of the, the limited depth inside of steel beam housings, we're going to need to sink this projector as far back into the headlight as possible so that the lens clears the lens on the projector you know, from the side profile. So that's really the reason why this huge gaping hole is required to be cut in the back of the housing so that you can get this all the way back in here just like that. And, you know, every projector comes in different shapes and sizes, so there's real no specified formula for the shape that you should cut. Uh, but using common sense, you know, you can look at the back of this, look at the back of this, and you should see some similarities. Um, as far as uh, getting started goes, we usually recommend getting out the Sharpie marker and just drawing a small hole in a rough shape and then you can always enlarge it later, but it's kind of hard to put back material once you've already cut it away. So get started by uh, marking up this reflector, and then we'll start cutting it just to match up with this one. And uh, then we can be begin mounting our projectors after that.
we've got our shrouds fully trimmed up and ready to mount in the seal beam retrofit. As you can see, we already got the angel eyes mounted in there and we have de-pinned the connector for the angel eyes so we can fish the wiring through the housing a little bit more easily. So we're gonna go ahead and start by preparing the shroud for its final installation onto the projector here. And to do that, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we clean the front lens frame of the projector with an alcohol pad like always, just to make sure that the surface is clean, full of any contaminants, uh, or you know, rid of any contaminants that can prevent the shroud from sticking on here. From there, we're gonna mix up our JB Weld, put it on these small fingers, array it around the inside of the shroud, so that when it's stuck to the front of the projector, it stays put, no road vibrations, heat, you know, all that stuff. Nothing locks it loose in the long run. We finally got our shroud mounted on the 6x4 retrofit on the Jeep, so we are ready to actually go ahead and put the lens cover back on. Uh, to do that, we're going to use our OCI Butyl Rubber Glue, which comes in a roll format like this, and we're going to just kind of stretch it out a little bit and just roll it around the outer edge of the channel here. It surrounds the housing. From there, we can heat up the housing, press the front lens back on, and just use some pliers all the way around the edges to smush it back together, and uh, we'll call it a day. After a couple days of getting our hands dirty doing the retrofit on this Jeep, we finally got them back on the truck. Thank God the headlights look level, everything fit. So the only thing we have left to do is just a little bit of fine tune adjustment in the aim and uh, we can call it a day. Mm -hmm.